This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Before we get right into your top local stories, Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us with a look at the forecast as this heat wave continues. Sheena. Hey, Monica, it is going to be another very hot day today, so a lot like yesterday. I think we'll see some record highs again. We still have the excessive heat warning inland heat advisory for the coast, so beach temperatures back in the 80s. If you're a few miles inland, you'll be in the 90s. Foothills or Mount, uh, inland valleys will be around 100. Foothills near 110. Mountains low 90s, so breaking out of the heat wave in the mountains already with a slight chance of an afternoon thunderstorm. So make sure you're hydrating before and during any outdoor activities. But the really important thing is to avoid those peak hours outside middle of the day into the afternoon. Make sure the pets have fresh water and cool temperatures too. So if the shade is too hot, bring them inside in the air conditioning. And of course, never leave the kids or pets in a hot car. Look at how the temperatures are going to be changing as we head through this week. The normal high inland is near 90. So today we're unseasonably hot still. Tomorrow we're not as hot as today, but we're still unseasonably hot mid 90s, but a bigger change. And then Wednesday and Thursday we go to unseasonably cool. I'll show you the 10 day coming up. Thank you. As the intense heat continues today, so does the added risk for wildfires. In fact, a few sparked over San Diego County over the weekend, but so far all of them are either out or do not pose a threat to people or homes. NBC 7's Nicole Gomez just spoke with the fire captain and he says they are staffed to the highest level just in case something new sparks. Meantime, the heat is not helping. But the heat is so extreme that uh, this you know, this is not unexpected, I think, with the high heat. Susan Sparks has been evacuated from two homes within a matter of days. First, because of the line fire in San Bernardino County, and then because of a small vegetation fire in Kensington yesterday. I'm very prepared because I live in Lake Arrowhead, and we're ready for, to leave at a moment's notice with medication, um, extra food, whatnot. And I was prepared. I didn't expect to get evacuated. I was actually out of town and came home to this evacuation and then a second evacuation here. All other evacuation orders across the county have been lifted. The Church 2 fire near Campo is out, held to 40 acres. Up in the North County, the Roblar fire burning on Camp Pendleton is at nearly 950 acres with 20% containment. No fire threat to people or structures. So far, San Diego County has escaped the heat wave relatively unscathed. Scathed, but Cal Fire says now is not the time to let your guard down. We have been relatively lucky the last couple days, but we want people to stay alert. Uh, if you're going to do yard work, maybe do that in the morning hours when it when it's cool. Don't go out in the heat of the day and, and start doing your yard work because there's that potential of having a, a, a large devastating wildland fire. It has been two weeks now since the deadly crash involving a teenager and two San Diego police officers. The teen and one of the officers died. Officer Zach Martinez survived, but with serious injuries. Police Chief Scott Wall came by the studio this morning to tell us about the officer's recovery. He still has a very long road of recovery. He's got uh, third and secondary burns on his hands, arms, face and head. Uh, he's got broken bones all over his body, shoulder, neck, mm -hmm. uh, ribs. He does not remember a thing. When I spoke to him uh, just two days before being released, he had he didn't even recognize his mom. Hmm. So it's it's amazing what the body does in his recovery process. But uh, unfortunately, he doesn't remember a single thing from that day. Hmm. Martinez does, however, remember Officer Austin Machitar, who died in the crash. Officer Machitar was his training officer the year prior. The 30 year old was a five year veteran of the force who loved to train others and was involved in the recruitment videos. This accident was a dire reminder of just how dangerous the job can be. Uh, it's a very dangerous job. We, we all know that and we want to make sure that we're doing it safely uh, for not just our police officers in the community, but but also for the people that we're trying to apprehend. Uh, all police officers that that have a, a reckoning that they go through at a time like this where they realize that hey what they've signed up for is very real this is a dangerous job a memorial is being held for officer Machitar on saturday september 21st at shadow mountain church in el cajon there will be departments from across the county in attendance and it will also be live streamed so the public can pay their respects a community still shaken months after multiple pellet gun attacks in Hillcrest. Remember this? We have the very latest about what is being done to find the person or people responsible for what police are calling a hate crime. And a push to continue tackling the homeless crisis in San Diego. What could be done today to give one city leader the power to do just that? That's coming up. Stay with us. 
You count on deeper investigations. Why didn't you just let her go? I'm trying to keep our family together. You count on getting a response. response. You count on a committed team looking out for you. A lot of our small business vendors tell me that you owe them quite a bit of money. In, in two languages. ¿Por qué piensa que ellos no hacen más? You count on results. And they said, you have your money back. And getting answers. Do you still feel let down? The slap in the face. This is NBC7 and Telemundo 20 investigates and responds. Only on NBC7 and Telemundo 20. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. San Diego police are investigating what they are calling hate crimes after a series of pellet gun attacks in Hillcrest. Police say the suspects drove around University Avenue shooting gel type pellets. It happened four times within the last week, the most recent early yesterday morning. This comes after similar pellet gun attacks in May, also in Hillcrest. Though no one was seriously injured in the latest attacks, Eddie Reynoso was one of the victims from earlier this year and says this has really taken the community by surprise. It's definitely sending a message. Uh, these individuals that drove through shooting at people, they picked non-lethal weapons. Uh, that is designed to intimidate people. People need to understand that whether it's a pellet gun, a, gel, a, uh, a water bead gun, a BB gun, it's still a gun and it's still designed to incite fear. It's still designed to cause damage. Investigators say the suspects in the latest incidents were seen driving a light colored minivan near the crime scene. Anyone with any information is asked to call police or Crime Stoppers. Today, the city council could move to expand Mayor Todd Gloria's mayoral powers to address the city's homeless and housing crisis. Council members could loosen restrictions on when the mayor can declare emergencies. The proposal will be discussed at today's council meeting. A controversial bill to give undocumented immigrants access to financial assistance to buy a home has been sent back to the drawing board. The governor vetoed it late last week. It would have prevented the state housing agency from considering someone's immigration status when awarding down payment assistance under the Dream for All program. But the bill did not appropriate extra money for the already struggling program, which is one of the financial concerns the governor pointed out in his veto. We will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Weather coverage you count on. You count on accuracy. The winds are going to be increasing. You count on these experts. Take a look here at our future weather. In two languages. You count on innovative tech. Look at our first alert Doppler radar. From a team you depend on. Dry conditions to round out this week. You count on early warnings. The tornado warning for parts of East County. Because you know every second counts. It just kept getting worse and worse. This is first alert weather. This is coverage you count on. Only on NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. Today is going to be very hot again, like yesterday. I think we'll see some record highs again. Excessive heat continues inland. Heat advisory for the coast. So inland valleys will be around 100 degrees. Foothills could be near 110. As you get closer to the coast, you'll see temperatures dropping into the 80s at the beaches, but that's still hot for the beaches for this time of the year. Low 90s for the mountains. Mountains are breaking out of the heat wave already with a slight chance of an afternoon shower or storm. We could even see some smoke from some wildfires way to our north as we head into tonight and tomorrow for mountains and deserts. For the coast and inland valleys, tomorrow not as hot, but it's still hot. We're much cooler Wednesday. Cooling continues for Thursday, Friday into the weekend, and even next week. We finally are going to be seeing a nice change in our weather pattern, and it's going to stick around for quite a while. So the mountains have that slight storm chance today. I think we'll see maybe an isolated thunderstorm or two, and then we head into tomorrow a little cooler, but a bigger break Wednesday. The rest of the week and into the weekend for the mountains and the deserts. All right, nice that relief is on the way. Alex Morgan has officially hung up her cleats after her final match with the San Diego Wave. Yesterday, she said goodbye to fans who have adored her for years. She made a brief final appearance on the pitch, leaving the field after the 13th minute. A nod to the jersey she wore for most of her storied career. She retires as a two-time World Cup champion and Olympic gold medalist. I feel like I did everything that I could have. I left everything on the field. I feel so at peace because I am ready to start a family. I am ready to hang up the boots and like allow the next generation to flourish. Morgan says she's ready for another great chapter with her second child on the way. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.